Welcome to Chainlink Research Reports, a YouTube series featuring research across the Web3 industry and academic fields with scholarship that expands our understanding of decentralized technologies. I'm Dr. Andy Boyan from Chainlink Labs, and today I'll be joined by Dr. Sharam Distar, an IEEE fellow and full professor at the Technical University at Vienna in Austria, and his co-authors from the University of Sevilla, Professors Pablo Fernandez, Jose Maria Garcia, and Antonio Ruiz Cortez. Elastic Smart Contracts and Blockchains proposes a reference architecture for smart contract computation that facilitates a multi-chain and highly complex world of off-chain data, such as those found in Internet of Things or IoT-based ecosystems. There's a challenge in designing smart contracts to react to various level, uh, levels of data abstraction, for example, numeric data versus narrative data. Thus, elasticity is proposed as a reference architecture to enable smart contracts to trigger from analytics based on a complex web of off-chain sensors, data, and multiple blockchain environments. Professor Distar will present the paper, followed by a Q&A session led by Chainlink Labs researcher, Dr. Jason Anastasopoulos, and all of the paper's co-authors. Welcome to this talk on an elasticity framework for smart contracts. My name is Shahram Dustar from the Technical University of Vienna in Austria. What are smart contracts? So smart contracts have been developed some eight years ago. They provide computation facilities to blockchains, so to enable automatic analysis and complex transactions. So, however, there is a problem when there is information flow that depends on such variables uh, such as time, quality, or resources. Therefore, we introduce the idea of elastic smart contracts to actually address that problem of having such variables, such as time, quality, resources, cost, and others, in order to, depending on, on those criteria, trigger different aspects of the blockchain. What is elasticity to begin with? So we have started like 10 years ago to focus on elasticity as one of the resilience building building blocks. Elasticity is a property from physics, which says something about a property of returning to an initial form or a state following some deformation. So this means that when you put stress on a material, it uh, stretches, and when you take it away, it shrinks back when the stress is removed. Similarly, the idea that we follow is in elastic computing to create a system which is able to address, uh, depending on the elasticity constraints, defining in a three-dimensional space how many resources you would need, what are the quality attributes like data input and output quality of the data, granularity, etc., resolution, and what are the cost uh, requirements. So in this, within this three-dimensional space, then, we can actually create a system and define a system which is able to react and adapt the application accordingly. Now, we want to apply this idea of elasticity within this three-dimensional space to the domain of blockchain. So these elasticity dimensions we look at, like resources, quality, and cost, are the following. So the resources basically range from the information provider that can correspond with things. So for example, sensor uh, data is coming in, or that can be software services, so for example, a government information system, or can be even going back to people, so for example, an approval from a stakeholder in the system. Depending on the type of the resource, a taxonomy of the quality aspects can be defined, such as the resolution of sensor data, or the availability of government information, uh, or the readiness of a stakeholder. Thirdly, the costs involved in the process can also be structured in terms of the resource type. So, for example, the energy cost of the sensor or the infrastructure cost of the information system or the personnel cost. So, in these three dimensions, we can define different ways of how the uh, blockchain can actually evolve. Depending on the resources, we define the quality or the costs that we define. And this adds a very important aspect to the smart contracts, as we uh, give you, a, a, as we will discuss it, an example here. So I have picked a very simple motivating scenario here, namely a street and a crossing of a street. So two streets essentially. 
Just imagine that we have a street equipped with sensors uh, which can detect how many cars are going. Um, so we can predict the flow. And when we come to a, a crossing, we would like to adapt the traffic lights. And we would like to uh, adapt basically to that very simple setting in a smart city. We can imagine such a setting having different layers. So the first layer basically looks at simply the street elastic smart contract. But on another layer down in the picture, we can also look at the management of the intersection, taking into account weather information, the, so the weather service, taking into account how many cars come there, uh, their speed, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a very simple scenario, but you can imagine an arbitrary complex scenario in a smart city, not just within one domain, but actually going across domains. So now we have sensors equipped uh, on the streets, deployed on the street, which provide information on the incoming uh, cars, essentially. So the layer one then would be that these street sensors in street sections provide data in different time resolutions. And the analytics then developed by street ESC would periodically perform an analysis over the sensors data to calculate a traffic flow estimation in that particular section of the street. This anal uh, analytical information would then be used to provide aggregated information to the next layer, which was in the picture, one layer down. It could also be used for local decisions in the same layer, such as to actuate an adaptable street lights in the street section that switches on in the presence of cars, so to dynamically adapt the switch off latency to the actual estimations of the traffic. The next layer, namely the layer of the intersection, could be to incorporate the presence prediction of different sections calculated in layer one in order to create an estimation of the traffic flow in the whole street. In this layer, we could also include weather forecast of as off-chain data, so the intersection uh, elastic smart contract could calculate an estimation of the congestion risk in order to optimize the stoplight rules for the given intersection. And we can add arbitrary layers, namely here layer N, that could leverage advanced use cases such as new generation contracts for waste management service that regulates the actual resource alignment algorithm based on the data harvested by the sensors. This could then be implemented by a combination of elastic smart contracts using the analytics gathered and calculating the actual bills automatically, providing a completely transparent and non-tampered with management procedures. So this elastic smart contract example, both elastic smart contracts could have a policy to constrain the maximum number of gas. So the gas is the accounting mechanism in some blockchain networks such as Ethereum used in the execution of such an analytics. So we have developed a elastic smart contract architecture, which we highlight in this paper. It is basically comprising of an elastic smart contract orchestrator and the elastic smart contract agent as depicted in this picture. And I'm going to discuss what these individual building blocks actually do. So our Elastic Smart Contract Framework provides reference implementations for these components, which offer concrete hooks, these are the dark gray boxes in the figure, to define the domain-specific analytics to be performed. Let's look at the individual components. The Elastic Smart Contract Orchestrator manages the execution of the blockchain system by doing a couple of things. Firstly, to monitor the elasticity dimensions, then calling the appropriate smart contracts according to the time and the performance constraints, constraints in the particular scenario. These constraints then are specified as elasticity rules with both the harvest and the result manager have to provide, so they have to define the lower and the upper bounds admissible for the duration of the analyst, uh, analysis execution as well as the initial values for the amount of resources to be used, among other parameters. 
The Elastic Smart Contract agent is deployed in the blockchain network and it contains a set of generic smart contracts that are responsible for monitoring the elasticity properties and then evaluating the performance of the domain-specific analytic smart contract that the client has to provide to the system. The domain-specific harvesting manager is responsible for managing the acquisition of the input data. So, for example, in this example from the set of sensors that we have deployed or any data source in general. And updating the data stored in the blockchain that will actually be used to perform the appropriate analytics. This component then must periodically obtain, according to the elasticity rules, defined a set of data uh, of input data and update the blockchain assets to store that data. In order to do so, the orchestrator then submits a transaction to the Elastic Smart Contract agent, smart contract responsible for the data update, which registers the newly acquired data within the data asset that will serve as the input for the domain-specific analysis smart contract, while removing the old data according to the elasticity rules defined in the Harvest Manager. There are two different kinds of data for input for this analytics. The first one is that the blockchain provides a persistent, immutable, and non-tampered way to store a set of transactions within the chain. Second, the digital assets stored in the blockchain can themselves provide current data comprised of dynamic sets of values that can be used for performing analytics as well. The Elastic Smart Contract Orchestrator performs the elasticity operation function by evaluating the current status of the system with respect to the specified elasticity rules, taking into consideration the average duration of the analysis execution the elasticity operation periodically evaluates whether the elasticity parameters should be changed to improve the expected performance of the Elastic Smart Contract. This evaluation is performed by the Elastic Smart Contract agent via the inter internal smart contract so that the evolution of the elasticity dimensions is registered and timestamped in the blockchain ledger. Domain-specific result manager, then, this component, focuses on executing the actual analytics of the specific scenario supported by the blockchain, which has to be provided as the domain-specific analytics contract into the Elastic Smart Contract agent. Thus, the result manager is responsible for executing periodically the anal analytics contract, which uses the data asset updated by the harvest manager as its input and stores the analysis results in other results asset located within the Elastic Smart Contract agent. The results from these executions are also collected by the Elastic Smart Contract Orchestrator, which then aggregates both the results and the compute performance statistics, including the analysis duration for the elasticity operation of the overall system. More on the evaluation details can be seen in this paper, which is a forthcoming journal paper in the IEEE CAA Journal of Automatica Sinica, where we provide also the data of the performance measurements of the Elastic Smart Contract. And also you can find this paper as a preprint version on my homepage. If you Google it, you can find it under my publication section. And we have provided an open source uh, implementation of everything that I was describing here, which you can download and experiment with. And with this, I want to thank you very much for your attention, and I would be happy to answer any questions which you sent me by email. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that fascinating presentation and for this really interesting paper. If you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves, everyone would really like to get to know you. Yeah, so maybe I start. I'm Sharon Dustar uh, from the Technical University in Vienna in Austria. And I'm a professor of computer science and heading the distributed systems group there. I'm Paulo Fernandez. Uh, I'm an associate professor at the University of Sevilla um, uh, in the line of uh, service governance. 
Hi, I'm Jose Maria Garcia. I'm also associate professor here in the University of Sevilla and also working on, on this uh, software engineering and services. Yes, I'm Antonio Ruiz, also a professor at the University of Sevilla and heading the uh, research uh, software engineering group. Thank you very much. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you, which range from uh, kind of more general to more specific. So starting with the first one, for background, can you discuss why fine scale and coarse scale data or really any scale of data is not interoperable? So for example, why don't statistical smoothing or aggregation methods work on these different data types? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Take your time. Well, I, I guess that the, uh, if I understood correctly, uh, the, the need for different coarse grain um, uh, analytics and data is something that is present in, in, in most of uh, realistic scenarios. And most of the time, the, they are performing in different flavors. And uh, it is very, very difficult to, to mix them together, uh, typically. Uh, in the specific case of the uh, scenarios that we present into the paper, where we have, like, for example, a smart city uh, environment, uh, you are all the time thinking about different kinds of analysis from uh, more tactical decisions or for more strategic decisions in the long term or tactically in the, in the short term. And that fine grain is one of the um, aspects that uh, are really fundamental uh, for the different types of analysis. So you need a, a framework that responds to those differences because uh, if you don't have uh, the, the, if the framework is not aware of the granularity, uh, then it's very easy to saturate or overuse the, 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 the network or the, the, the computational environment that you're uh, uh, using. I'm not, I'm not sure if that uh, answer your question or. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. So our, this is kind of a, a bigger picture question. So are Elastic Smart Contracts building complex adaptive systems models to represent complex adaptive systems at all? And if so, are we introducing new locations for error to be introduced into the system and make it less useful than relying on more discrete elements within complex systems? Yeah, I, I, in a sense, yes. Um, because what you want to do is to involve multiple stakeholders with multiple different uh, interests in asking the system the questions basically or the, uh, the analysis what they are interested in and in that sense i think this is one vehicle to uh, decrease the complexity in analyzing the system properties mm. if that makes sense yeah absolutely I, um, and I would add that um, the, the normally this complexity of the systems are uh, typically based on a simple uh, um, uh, uh, parts. Uh, the complexity arises from the aggregation of these simple parts. And, and I would say that to have a transparent uh, layer where you can put these simple parts in terms of uh, elastic smart contracts allows to model uh, uh, collaboratively, this uh, complexity in a in a much in a much more transparent way. So, so I, I would definitely agree with that. And that is, mm. it helps <clears throat> in that complexity. Thank you. Related to this, are would you say that data quality and and variation across sensors in smart cities? Um, would you say that they're kind of accounted for in the Elastic Smart Contract framework? And if so, how? Does that question make sense? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, we we actually uh, talk about a lot uh, about the different quality of the the analysis that you want to 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 perform in the in this type of systems. And the idea is that uh, if you have uh, several, uh, well, as as the previous question was talking about the coarse grain and the fine grain of the data, if you have several types of sensors, several types of data in the end that will come uh, from, from this uh, smart city scenario, then I think that you will 
actually end up on uh, on on having to think about the trade-off between the quality of the mm. analytics in the end mm. and the amount of, and the, the the diversity of the data that you want to use in, in this type of analysis. So in that sense, I think that our, our framework basically uh, um, uh, takes that into account and tries to provide a way to define this trade-off, this balance that you want to 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 achieve. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, this is kind of another big picture question, and something that I think is is always a big concern. Um, so what would you say are some of the security risks inherent in smart city infrastructures? And do you think that the elastic smart contracts that you propose can address some of these concerns? I would say that, uh, well, the security, of course, in, in any public um, scenario, like the smart CD one, uh the transparency and the and the well the the, the dangers of, of having uh manipulation of the data and the risks of not having transparency are quite quite hard and and, and actually uh the, the more automation we put into the picture uh the more sensitive it becomes uh the the security aspects because uh we we, we can have a high impact uh if some of the decisions that we are having are compromised because of security reasons so um uh, the shift towards uh, an elastic smart contract uh, or a smart contract in general when you put the the non-tampering mechanism uh, into play uh, will allow an increase on the security uh, of course, it all depends on the security configuration of the of the chain itself and the, uh, how the nodes that are involved in that uh, chain uh, are properly properly secure. But it definitely adds a, a security layer on the top of a traditional um, IT infrastructure that doesn't take into account this kind of non-tampering mechanism. So. I think summarizing a smart cities in particular is, is really uh, a necessary where you should take uh, less risks and you should address the, the potential security risks for sure. And if you put the uh, elastic, the, the blockchain technologies and the elastic smart contracts into play helps to, to reduce in that uh, as long as it is properly configured. So what are some of the next steps for this research? <laughs> we were discussing this before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows? So, yeah. Well, we are just in the middle of actually uh, discussing exactly this. Uh, that's why we are together today to uh, discuss the next steps, really. So uh, not really very much that we can talk about it uh, immediately, or maybe uh, Rosa Maria, you want to? Maybe we, we, we were thinking on uh, actually uh, like um, raising the level of of, uh, of generalization in, in our framework because mm -hmm. in the end the work that we, we that we did uh, was uh, applied uh, to a concrete scenario and and we we make some effort to to have the framework uh, as general as possible and i i would say that uh, that's actually uh, mm -hmm. something uh, to to take into account also for the long term to to improve the generalist the Generalization. generalization of the framework and try yeah. to apply it into different uh, scenarios also. That's right, because we are not interested in solving one particular use case, uh, but we really want to provide the community with a generalizable approach to, to exactly. That. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I have. I'm Jason Anastasopoulos for Chainlink Research Reports. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye.